there is no definitive scientific proof through real-world observation that carbon dioxide is responsible for any of the slight warming of the global climate that has occurred during the last 300 years since the peak of the Little Ice Age. But there is certainty beyond a reasonable doubt that CO2 is the building block for all life on Earth and that without its presence in the global atmosphere at sufficient concentration, this would be a dead planet. Yet today our children and our publics are taught that CO2 is a toxic pollutant that will destroy life and bring civilization to its knees. Here is the supposed smoking gun of catastrophic climate change, the Keeling curve of CO2 concentration in the Earth's atmosphere since 1959. A well-documented graph of global temperature over the past 65 million years shows that we have been in a major cooling period since the Eocene thermal maximum 50 million years ago. The Earth was as much as 16 degrees warmer then, with most of the increased warmth at higher latitudes. The entire planet, including the Arctic and Arct Antarctica, was ice-free and the land there was covered in forests. The ancestors of every species on Earth today survived through what may have been the warmest period in the history of modern life. It makes one wonder about dire predictions that even a two degree rise in temperature from pre-industrial times would cause mass extinctions and the destruction of civilization. We have learned from Antarctic ice cores that for the past 800,000 years during the Pleistocene Ice Age, there have been quite regular periods of major glaciation followed by interglacial periods in 100,000 year cycles. It is sobering to consider the magnitude of climate change during the past 20,000 years since the peak of the last major glaciation. At that time, there were 3.3 kilometers of ice on top of what is today the city of Montreal, a city of more than 3 million people. 95% of Canada was covered in an ice sheet. Coming to the core of my presentation, carbon dioxide is the currency of life and the most important building block for all life on Earth. All life is carbon-based, including our own. Surely the carbon cycle and its central role as the foundation of life should be taught to our children, rather than the demonization of CO2 that carbon is a pollutant. We know for a fact that CO2 is essential and that it must be at a certain level in the atmosphere for the survival of plants, which are the primary food for all the other species alive today. Should we not encourage our citizens, students, teachers, politicians, and other leaders to celebrate CO2 as the giver of life that it is? It is a proven fact that plants, including trees and all our food crops, are capable of growing much faster at higher levels of CO2 than present in the atmosphere today. Even at today's concentration of 400 parts per million, 0.04%, four one-hundredths of one percent, are relatively starved for nutrition. The optimum level of CO2 for plant growth is about five times higher, 2,000 parts per million. We are witnessing the greening of the earth as higher levels of CO2 due to human emissions from the use of fossil fuels promotes increased growth of plants around the world. This has been confirmed by scientists with CSIRO in Australia, in Germany in research forests, and in North America in wild forests. Only half of the CO2 we are emitting from the use of fossil fuels is showing up in the atmosphere. The balance is going somewhere else. And the best science says most of it is going into an increase in biomass of global plant life. What could be wrong with that as forests and agricultural crops become more productive? By comparison, when modern life evolved over 500 million years ago, there was nearly 15,000 billion tons of CO2 in the atmosphere, 17 times today's level. A lot of nasty things are said about fossil fuels, even though they are largely responsible for our longevity, our prosperity, and our personal freedom. Hydrocarbons, the energy component of fossil fuels, are 100% organic, as in organic chemistry, which is the chemistry of carbon. They were produced by solar energy in ancient seas and forests. When they are burned for energy, the main products are water and carbon dioxide, the two most essential foods for life 
as plants combine them to build the sugars that provide the energy for all living things. And fossil fuels are by far the largest storage battery of solar energy on Earth. Nothing else comes close. The past 150 million years has seen a steady drawing down of CO2 from the atmosphere. There are many components to this, but what matters is the net effect. A removal on average of 37,000 tons of carbon from the atmosphere every year for 150 million years. The amount of CO2 in the atmosphere was reduced by more than 90% during this period. If this trend continues, CO2 will inevitably fall to levels that threaten the survival of plants which require a minimum of 150 parts per million to survive. How long will it be at the pleasant, present level of CO2 depletion until most or all life on Earth is threatened with extinction by lack of CO2 in the atmosphere? During this Pleistocene ice age, CO2 tends to reach a minimum level when the successive glaciations reach their peak of cold. During the last glaciation, which peaked 18,000 years ago, CO2 bottomed out at 180 parts per million, possibly the lowest level CO2 has been in the history of the Earth. This is only 30 parts per million above the level that plants begin to die. Paleontological research has demonstrated that even at 180 parts per million, there was a severe restriction of growth as plants began to starve. With the onset of the warmer interglacial period, CO2 rebounded to 280 parts per million. But even today, with human emissions causing CO2 to reach 400 parts per million, plants are still restricted in their growth rate, which would be much higher if CO2 were 1,000 to 2,000 parts per million. Here is the shocking news. Humans had not begun to unlock some of the carbon stored as fossil fuels, all of which had been in the atmosphere before sequestration by plants and animals. Life on Earth would have soon been starved of this essential nutrient and would begin to die. It does boggle the mind in the face of our knowledge that the level of CO2 has been steadily falling, that human CO2 emissions are not universally acclaimed as a miracle of salvation. From direct observation, we already know that the extreme predictions of CO2's impact on global temperature are highly unlikely given that during the past 18 years there has been no statistically significant warming. You heard it here. Human emissions of carbon dioxide have saved life on Earth from inevitable starvation and extinction due to the lack of carbon dioxide. To use the analogy of the atomic clock, if the Earth were 24 hours old, we were at 38 seconds to midnight when we reversed the trend towards end times. If that isn't good news, I don't know what is. You don't get to stave off Armageddon every day. I issue a challenge to anyone to provide a compelling argument that counters my analysis of this historical record and the prediction of CO2 starvation based on the 150 million year trend. Ad hominem arguments about deniers need not apply. I submit that much of society has been collectively misled into believing that global CO2 and temperature are too high when the opposite is true for both. Does anyone deny that below 150 parts per million of CO2 that plants will die? Does anyone deny that the Earth has been in a 50 million year cooling period and that this Pleistocene Ice Age is one of the coldest periods in the history of the Earth? We are not the enemy of nature, but its salvation. To conclude, carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels is the stuff of life, the staff of life, the currency of life, indeed the backbone of life on Earth.